Iraq's Prime Minister Nouri al-Maliki continues to cling to power in spite of moves to replace him from a broadening coalition of critics. Those critics, including the country's president, accuse him of fueling Iraq's sectarian divisions and paving the way for ISIS, the jihadist group currently advancing across the country. With me to discuss Iraq and its political challenges is editor of the Financial Times, Lionel Barber. Lionel, I guess the first question is, with Maliki now officially replaced as Prime Minister, what will Maliki do next? Well, I haven't got a direct phone line into Mr. Maliki. What we do know is he has clung on to power tenaciously, mm. not just for the last few days, but for months, despite heavy pressure from his original sponsor, uh, the United States, and even pressure, which we hear from behind the scenes, by the Iranians, the French. Maliki ought, in political terms, to be a busted flush, but he still has, apparently, some support within the armed forces. Yeah, I mean, I guess that's critical, isn't it? There were reports that at 10.30 p.m. last night, Iraq time, um, Maliki ordered uh, some of his specialist forces within the army to surround the Green Zone. We even heard some unconfirmed reports that there are pro-Maliki uh, military units around the presidential palace itself. Uh, so it does very much seem that uh, this 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 uh, political situation is not quite decided yet, even though the president has officially appointed a, a new prime minister uh, in Mr. Al Abadi. What you have to understand now is that Iraq is a broken country; it's broken into parts. You have Kurdistan in the north; it's not an official country, obviously, but they are a, a, a seriously an, an autonomous region. You have the north, vast swathes of the north, including critically Anbar province which has been overrun by the ISIS jihadis and you have the south that predominantly Shia not not in not everywhere uh, which is governed would be a polite term by Mr. Maliki the armed forces are split corrupt overrun uh, so nobody quite knows what what's going to happen question I would say is who ha enjoys the broadest support from outside and can that person be strong enough to rally the, all these diffuse forces around them? And we have seen uh, Secretary Kerry of the States uh, already endorse the, the new Prime Minister. Uh, but what has been striking in the last 48 hours or so is also the extent to which the States has thrown its military support behind the Kurds rather than the, uh, the, the central government in Baghdad. So, I mean, how much is Kurdistan really going to play the key role in, in the next few days militarily in, in perhaps pushing back ISIS, do you think? Well, I th think that they have obviously with, through their Peshmerga local militia forces uh, somewhat uh, underwhelming performance in the first few weeks of the fight against ISIS. I think that surprised a few people. The Americans have clearly decided that they are a better bet than the Iraqi forces that have deserted in droves, not been paid. Uh, by the way, the, even the Kurdish forces have also not been paid, partly because of money owned from the government. But I think they are the most credible force and the Americans are looking at Kurdistan, oil rich, uh, they have a consulate in Erbil, they really cannot afford to let ISIS take over another swathe of territory. Do you think Mr. Abadi will be left governing over a, a rump state effectively? I mean, he's already actually, I think, in his, uh, in his uh, past uh, ten years in government, been quite hostile to, to uh, oil revenues remaining with the Kurds. So do you think this is the moment at which perhaps that uh, political division on the ground becomes more firm? I think it solidifies. I don't think Baghdad can hold sway any more over the rest of the country or to the north. The question is, can ISIS be rolled back and how? And then is there any prospect of Mr. Abadi uh, beginning to reach out to those sunny leaders uh, in Anbar province, for example, that were won over in the initial stages of Mr. Maliki's reign when he had, somewhat reluctant, but he still had American support, and then frittered it away because he essentially wanted to dominant on narrow ethnic religious grounds. These are the, the sons of Iraq, the, the tribal leaders who were brought in to fight against ISIS in its previous incarnation. Do you think that the answer to bringing them back on board is purely monetary or will it require some kind of political social concessions from the government? Well, they were turned, these sons of Iraq, uh, in Anbar province and elsewhere, they were turned by the Americans under General Petraeus in the so-called surge with money, 
but also critically because they calculated they would join the winning side. And the question today, this week, is who, what is the winning side? It's certainly not Mr. Abadi yet. Uh, at the moment, it looks like ISIS. They have the force with them. Lionel, thank you very much. Thanks, Sam.